Ladies and gentlemen, as promised this evening, I'm joined with Adrian and Enzo. And this evening, we're talking about the Tunnel 2011, along with the Tunnel 2011, The Other Side of Darkness, which is a brand new documentary feature, which is being premiered for the very first time at MonsterFest 2021. Gentlemen, how are you doing this evening? Really well, well thank you. I'm getting yeah. some nods, I'm getting some grins. Um, in case the listeners aren't too familiar with our guests this evening, uh, Enzo, why don't we start with you? Why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself, who you are, what you're currently doing, and why are we talking to you tonight? <laughs> why are you talking to me, Peter? Um, so, uh, yeah, look, I've, I've been producing now for, um, God, well over, a, a, probably pushing 20 years, I would think. Um, I also direct, I write, I just make stuff, you know, I like uh, telling stories and that's kind of uh, everything I do kind of leads from that. Um, I was the one of the producers and one of the writers on the original Tunnel uh, film back in, yeah. in 2011 um, and therefore one of the one of the two guys that came up with the uh, the whole crazy scheme that we uh, that we ran with to get the thing on the way in the first place. So that's me in a nutshell, I think. I like it. That's a very, very good nutshell. And welcome also, Adrian. Why don't you tell us a little about yourself tonight? Hi, yeah. Um, I guess I'm a documentary filmmaker uh, and The Tunnel Edge of Darkness is my debut feature, which is really great. And um, yeah, do a lot of shooting and editing in my spare time as well um i'd say that that just about sums it up absolutely now you mentioned that this is actually your first directional debut and i must say adrian what a tremendous uh start to your directing career you definitely uh, hit the ball out of the park on this particular film now i had the honor gents last week to actually screen both films and i decided to do this back to back uh i had a late night but i certainly have no regrets and i had a tremendous time watching the original 2011 film the tunnel and then jumping straight into the documentary and as you can imagine i've got several questions for you both and i think we'll tackle with enzo first you know when we look at this film that was originally done back in 2011 and this film as i mentioned is going back to monster fest so people have the opportunity to see this film if they've never seen it before they can see it on the best and biggest screen in melbourne very soon you know what is it about this film that is still being spoken about, you know, since its official release back in 2011. Why are we still talking about this film in the future? Yeah, I think that's a bit of a loaded question because there's, it's, there's, there's just because there's many facets to that answer. I think, you know, um, certainly in industry circles, there's a lot of talk about it because of the way we uh, we crowdfunded it. You know, we're Australia's first crowdfunded feature. Um, we didn't do that by, you know, jumping on Kickstarter or Indiegogo. I'm not even sure that Indiegogo even existed at the time. So yeah. we kind of rolled our own and, and worked it out and came up with this, this thing that kind of wrapped marketing and distribution and audience and finance all into one sort of lightning in a bottle idea. Mm -hmm. So I think that still gets talked about a lot, but over the years and when, after all the hype from that stuff has died down i think new audiences and even some of the old audiences but new audiences are coming to the film and discovering it not knowing anything about that stuff and just digging it as a cool film right so so i think you know it has this kind of cool little underground no pun intended status um you know with uh, with cult movie fans and then for you know people who are kind of interested in, in in different ways of doing things in the industry you often refer to it as a, a a benchmark as well so i guess that's an answer to your question that's a great answer i know i did load it with lots of topping on that one but uh you know i'm full of surprises this is what i do and i love to hear your first opinions but there's no secret the tunnel 2011 did uh, change cinema history you know forever the way that the film was actually released from distribution from how the film was made uh, i was saying to adrian before this interview that i had so many questions while watching the film how did you get Julia Gillard in a shot? How did you guys make it look so real? I had so many questions. So going into this documentary afterwards, you know, it was a real dessert for me. It was tasty. It was great. It was very fulfilling. And, uh, you know, going to you, Adrian, now with this next question, you've obviously seen the tunnel at some point because you've made a documentary about it. You know, how did this film impact you personally when you first watched it? 
Yeah, I mean, that's a really good question. I think when the tunnel came out, I was at the tail end of my degree. I hadn't even graduated um, my course at that stage. And um, yeah, by the time I was done, I needed an internship and I ended up landing at Distracted Media with with Enzo and Jules. And um, mm. I hadn't actually, you know, full disclosure, I hadn't seen the tunnel. I hadn't heard of what they did. I was in my little kind of uni bubble and um yeah, I, they, they gave me a DVD and I watched it, you know, that week because I thought as an intern, I had to, I thought it was, you know, homework from them. And, um, and yeah, it, it's, it's awesome. And what I love about it is kind of that blending of genres, you know, you've got the found footage elements to it, and then you've got the, the interviews um, post event, I suppose. And um, yeah, I think it, that that documentary feel really, really sells it. Yeah. Um, and then kind of, you know, as I mentioned, I've known Enzo for a really long time and just kind of, you know, just tidbits, little morsels of information about the film and how they made it kind of, you know, we talk about it, I pick his brain about it and it kind of yeah. like, yeah, the more I learned about it, the more I was sort of like, what the hell? Like, yeah. you, you know, you had all these how questions and the more info you get, the more questions there are. Yeah. Um, I think it's, you know, one of the brilliant things about it is kind of, you know, just problem solving the entire way through. Um, and yeah, it's just a, it's, it's a really, really cool, cool horror film. Absolutely. And for those listening, if you haven't seen The Tunnel, you know, we've seen found footage films before, but The Tunnel is very, very different and unique. It's not a horror film necessarily straight from the start. It feels raw. It feels dramatic. It's actually got a lot of thrills and chills. And then it becomes a horror film and you're having a complete roller coaster time uh, with this film. For those that haven't seen it, that was my <coughs> personal experience. And, you know, when it comes to making a documentary about a film that was made and released 10 years ago, you know, how did you two guys talk about, you know, making a documentary? I mean, how did this sort of come about? Um, Enzo, we might start with you on that one. Yeah, look, I mean, it, it kind of relates to the first question that you asked me really, which is, you know, I found myself telling a lot of the same stories to a whole bunch of different people who all wanted to talk to me about the tunnel, right? Mm. Um, so th that, that was kind of bouncing around in my brain. And, and, you know, I'm happy to talk about it because obviously, especially from emerging filmmakers, just sort of going, how the hell do you make things on the smell of an oily rag? Or, you know, how, do you, how did you go about, what was the thinking behind the, the, the funding mechanism and all of this sort of stuff? Like they're the two questions I get a lot, right? Mm. Um, and, and it's always been on my mind that, you know, if, if I could find a way to, to show that to people rather than doing it one conversation at a time, that would, uh, that would probably be useful and safe to everybody, not just me. Um, yeah. but, but also I knew that because when we were filming, so part of the reason the documentary style is, is so heavy in the tunnel is because um, both of us, both myself and Julian, Jules especially, had a huge, a big history in making um, documentary content. Mm. So the second we started making this film and decided we were going to do it, we all had ca a camera in our face all of the time, right? I'm actually surprised that there is as much footage of Jules in the doco as there is because yeah. he was always behind the camera filming stuff. Yeah. So, um, you know, so I knew we had this wealth of behind the scenes footage that we just scraped the surface of with the DVD extras at the time mm. and kind of just went, well, it's, you know, we, we were in this weird kind of mid pandemic thing and both sitting around and I caught up with a coffee for a coffee with Adrian and just kind of went, do you want to do this thing? Like, I can't do it because... <laughs> It's just, otherwise it's just going to be like a big ego fluff project for me. And that's not, that's not cool. Yeah. But I think there's value in it. What do you think? And you'd like, and you know, I mean, the rest is kind of history, right? Yeah. And what was it like, Adrian, when, you know, Enzo is sitting across the table with you, you know, with this idea and opportunity, I mean, did you sort of get chills on the back of your neck, um, you know, with the excitement of talking about a film that you personally enjoy? I mean, what were your thoughts when you met the, the man across the table? Yeah, I mean, look, when, when Enzo asked if I wanted to do the docker, I said yes immediately, um, you know, partly because um, I'm a fan of the, the movie and obviously, you know, I've you know, worked with Enzo for just about almost as long as the tunnel has been out. So there's, there's wow. that where there's a, you know, a pretty good sort of 
uh, like we know each other fairly, fairly well. And, yeah. um, you know, and it was an opportunity, like you said earlier, to, for me to make my first movie as well. So like all of those things. And I love, I love talking about movies and I love being able to kind of contextualize them in the sort of, you know, in that time period where they came out and, and the tunnel is so, so interesting in that way. There's because, you know, the, the whole BitTorrent thing um, mm -hmm. and trying to use traditional distribution and that all of that stuff yeah. was just kind of insane. Like, it's crazy that they even tried to do it. And it's crazy that they managed to kind of succeed uh, as as they ended up doing. And yeah, um, yeah it, it just... Oh, a whole bunch of different passions of mine managed to kind of come together to to in, into this kind of one project which was which was really nice it was um yeah it was really fulfilling yeah and look when you mentioned the word passion when i watched this documentary um the passion is actually oozing on the screen i can see that there is you know passion on how this film was made but also just passion sharing the story with the entire world about the journey how it was made the challenges you mentioned briefly about uh, distribution so for those that are actually listening uh, the tunnel 2011 was released in a very different style and fashion to how films are released in the present day um, Enzo may want to correct me on this one but it was in fact released on BitTorrent and uh, obviously that reached an incredible range very large range of movie lovers and audiences that had an in-home experience whether it's with their computer big tv and uh, they were really treated with a tremendous film in home or on their computer um was that correct then did i miss anything on that release yeah no no that that's 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 pretty much the size of it i mean it's, it's certainly the thing that everybody was was talking about i think what we were trying to do is then fold that into you know more traditional ways of accessing it so that the basic principle behind the release well, if we take one step back, the basic principle behind making the film was we wanted to get ourselves on the map as filmmakers and get yes. noticed, right? Yes. So, so then it follows from there that if you're crowdfunding something and you can pay for making the film that way, and you don't owe anybody any money, then you have a lot of flexibility in how you mm. can release the film. And if you've got a platform like BitTorrent, um, that is just going, it is in a frenzy of, of content hungry, whatever, and in this battle for legitimization that it was at the time. Mm. And you can drop your content in that and know that with, you know, it's just going to propagate like wildfire. Yeah. Um, that's a pretty smart way of reaching a really, really big audience and getting noticed. And, you know, I think the number one comment we got, especially from people um, who watched it from uh, downloading it um, from a torrent was, hang on why is this movie free like yeah. this is too good this is too good to be free i don't understand what's happening you know um yeah. it, people thought it was a like a, a a trap to catch people downloading illegal films and all kinds yeah. of things it was hilarious we were like no nah, man we just want you to see the film and you know hopefully you like it and hopefully um you know it, it triggers something for us which obviously it did uh, yeah i mean even in the present day how often do you get a free movie that sort of quality and that sort of entertainment free of charge even 10 years later it just does not happen so again you guys really did really did revolutionize you know film and cinema particularly the way it was released and you know i'm going to talk about the cast and crew with the original film from 2011 uh you know this crew is amazing i mean i could be here all night you know, talking about their performances, which, by the way, are all tremendous, real, again, so real to the point you don't know if you're watching a movie or a documentary. That really did stuff me up, so good job. Um, but, you know, what was it like getting the band, as, as you might say, back together again as we reflect back on the original film? You know, what was it like getting the original crew and, and, and having them go back in time, revisiting their performances, their experience, and how they got the role, and the list sort of goes on. Like, what was that like getting the band back together again? We might um, start with you on that one, Adrian, if you could. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I think one of the one of the best things about the way Enzo and Julian work are that um, you know they find good people to work with. They find great creatives, but they're good people first, and then they you know work with them as much as they can. And so, um, just through the years, I've met people from the tunnel here and there on different projects or in the you know in the office or whatever and um so it was really nice being able to reconnect with them and kind of over over at experience they all shared together that was 
overwhelmingly positive like filmmaking is really difficult there's no like there's no there's no two ways about it it's really hard yeah um but everyone just seemed to be so uh like grateful to have been a part of it every like you know every single interview that i did especially with the the, the cast um mm -hmm. and color all of that production team like you know there was a point in every interview where they're like oh yeah so this is probably where you want the dirt right this is where you want the dirt i'm like yes. yeah i mean great if you've got any and they're like no i don't oh, <laughs> i don't have, i don't have any it was just overall it was really fun um yeah. and so yeah it was really cool I got, I got to meet a few brand new people through this process as well but awesome. um yeah you know and carlo uh did a tremendous job uh directing those guys um 10 years ago and and you know everyone just kind of it was it was kind of just a big love in to be honest yeah. everyone just you know was super keen to chat about it yeah fantastic what I, about I, for you and so what was that like for you yeah look the the, the experience for me had a, a bit of a different um facet to it as well in that obviously it was a massive trip down memory lane for mm. me in all kinds of ways, right? Watching, watching the edits come together. Um, and, you know, shout out to um, Adrian's very close collaborator, Dan Berghofer, who was the editor on this, who like yeah. between the two of them, they put in some massive hard yards to pull together, pull, just trawl through a ridiculous amount of footage to get. I was going to um, say, what, yeah. What, what was, what came down to an hour and a half, but um uh, I, I think for me, the thing that I enjoyed, aside from just sort of going back and going, wow, we really, like, you kind of forget how crazy some of that stuff was that we did. Yeah. The, 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 I found a sense of, um, of nostalgia, but also pride in the fact that the overwhelming sense that I got from hearing people talk about it today, as well as watching the behind the scenes snippets at the time was just yeah. how much of a blast everybody had making this film, right? Yeah. And maybe not, maybe there are a couple of people that came and went that maybe, you know, might not have quite gelled with the group. And so they might have different things to report, but by and large, everybody had an absolute blast on the film. And, um, you know, it's nice. It's nice to know. I think, I think I say something along these lines in the doco, but it's nice to know that we kind of, we set out to make a mark as filmmakers, which we did, but we also created this episode in all of these people's lives that they look back on fondly and still like when I mm. cross paths with them today, just sort of, just sort of go, yeah, that was, it was, it was so much fun. Um, creatively, I think they had a great experience with Carlo, yep. you know, um, all of that sort of stuff. So, so I think that was the thing for me is like, everyone just had a blast and they all have their stories to tell as a result as well. Like I, I only just heard about, um, Steve Davis's uh, Kelly Rowland story for the first time making this doco, which was Brilliant. hilarious to me. Yeah. Um, you know, so for, for, for those that are listening that haven't seen the doco yet, um, he, he basically one ups uh, Kelly Rowland on a, on a, in a shoot situation where people are kind of rushing and crowding around him as the guy from the tunnel instead of uh, this me absolute megastar who's who's on set. So Love it. it's um yeah, it's great. It's it's a really it's a it's a heartwarming. <laughs> I absolutely love it. And obviously the best way to experience both of these films is obviously at Monster Fest this weekend. Now that's no secret. This is the way to experience yeah. both features. However, there are some people like myself that are stuck in this humid, hot Queensland weather, or maybe they're stuck somewhere else in Australia. If they can't make it to Monster Fest, how can they see the tunnel 2011? How can they catch up and have this great experience that I've had recently? Is it available yeah. on DVD or Blu-ray? I mean, where can they see this film? The, the, the easiest way to get, a, get your hands on a copy of The Tunnel is uh, to go to www.deadhousetv and okay. uh, you can head to the shop and there's some hard copies or you can uh, click on the icon that takes you to a page where you can stream it for absolutely free. Fantastic. So you can actually still stream this movie for free as if it was BitTorrent well, all over again almost. I mean, here's the thing with BitTorrent, right, is that it's all peer-to-peer. -peer. So yeah. once you put it up on BitTorrent, there is no taking it down. And so yeah. certainly, you know, tens of millions of, of downloads later, there is no taking it down. That thing is yeah. like, that. it's out there for good forever. Absolutely. <laughs> so 
And look, just my two cents worth, for those that are listening, if you are going to experience this horror movie, although it is kind of cool that you can watch it for free, as you can tell by the background, gents, I strongly, strongly, highly recommend that you experience this film in the premium format, which has got to be either in your local cinema uh, or on Blu-ray. So please support these guys. Uh, this is a tremendous film. And I must compliment too, you know, the visuals and even the surround sound. Um, I watched this movie at night, man, it freaked me the hell out. The surround sound um, aspect was really tremendous. And so my two cents worth is look, just dip into your pocket, just that little deep and grab this Blu-ray. I think you'll have, I'm confident you'll have a tremendous experience. Um, gentlemen as we come up to a bit of a summary and close you know as mentioned the tunnel 2011 is going back to monster fest and then a brand new feature is being released with it titled the tunnel the other side of darkness which is a brand new 2021 feature if i gave you gentlemen the floor why on earth should the people in melbourne go to monster fest and check out these two films this is your last opportunity to pour out your heart your soul, your sales pitch, you know, why should people experience either feature? Uh, Adrian, I'm going to throw the mic to you. What are your thoughts on that? Why should people go check out these films this weekend? Well, I mean, first of all, both films are just really bloody good. You know, if you, if you mm -hmm. want to sit in a, in a dark room for, for a few hours and, you know, get a double feature, then you could, you could do a lot worse. The films are really, really good. Um, anyone who has a passing interest in kind of, you know, really, really messing with the system um, is going to really enjoy the, the documentary and they're really going to enjoy the film as well because it kind of, you know, it broke new, new ground in so many ways and yeah. um, what, be what better way to, to learn about a film than, you know, doing, doing a deep dive with a, with a behind the scenes making of Doco. So come and watch, come and take a look. Nailed it. Enzo, what are your thoughts? Well, I think that uh, the, the first thing I want to say is that um, you should go to Monster Fest because Monster Fest is freaking awesome and they yeah. have an amazing lineup of films every single year. Yeah. Um, and we're honored to be a part of it this year, not only with one film, but two, which is mm. incredible. Um, that day, I'm actually flying in on the Sunday and the, um, the session before ours is a documentary on found footage uh, oh. as a genre as well. I think it's, uh, I, I can't remember the title, but I, I'm dead keen to check that out as well. So Brilliant. If, you're a, if you're a fan of found footage horror, it's a dream afternoon. You come out of a documentary about the history of found footage horror um, straight into, you know, uh, Adrian's documentary and then wrapping up with a 10th anniversary big screen screening of the tunnel. Um, Amazing. You know, it sounds like a good, good, good time. I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen the tunnel in years myself, so I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing it for the first time in about a decade on the big screen as well. It's going to be great fun. Fantastic. Mm. So you hear that? Enzo is actually going to be among the cinema crowd. Um, if you spot him, definitely say good day. Well, but actually, I will be too. Oh, Adrian's there as well. There you go. Yeah, we'll have to be there because we're, we're actually doing Q&As after both sessions. So I'm doing a QA and a after the film and uh, Adrian and I are doing a Q&A after the documentary. So absolutely yep. amazing this is brilliant gentlemen i really do appreciate the time and once again for those listening uh you know if you get a chance to check these films out they come highly recommended i have actually published an online review for both the tunnel along with the tunnel the other side of darkness and both of these films get a massive thumbs up from me both films gave me a big smile ear to ear and i had just a tremendous experience quite differently on both levels but the enjoyment was by all means an all time high. Um, you know, I really wish both of you guys all the best in future, whether it's with Monster Fest or any sort of upcoming projects. Um, these films have really changed my life and I'll be telling everyone and anyone to go see these films in the new future or this weekend. Uh, Adrian, Enzo, thank you once again. And uh, I look forward to talking with you again, hopefully in the near future. Pleasure, Peter. Thank you very much. Well.